I'm Philip Rinesmith. I'm a senior environmental scientist with the Southwest Florida Water Management District and the project manager for the Chazawiska Head Spring Restoration Project. And what we're doing is a dredge sediment removal project to improve water quality and water clarity in the Chesawiska Head Springs. The Chesawiska Restoration Project is a cooperative effort between the Southwest Florida Water Management District and Citrus County. Together we've worked to set the site up, provide uh, treatment areas for the sediment that's coming out of the Head Springs. The sediment removal is actually like vacuuming a swimming pool. Essentially a large pump is used with suction hoses to remove the sediment material. It's pumped into filtration bags, the clear water is returned to the spring, and the material is hauled to an agricultural site to be used as a soil amendment. So the sediment slurry material that's coming out of the head spring passes through a six inch main line, comes behind where you see the tanks are set up. That material is injected with a polymer. Essentially what that polymer does is that binds the small fine particles together and allows the bags to perform at their, their highest capacity. That's the raw slurry, the water that comes out from the dredge. So you can see that you could, you could basically wait. That material would take an incredibly long period of time to settle out. Now this is raw water that's come um, directly from the spring. You can see it starting to settle out just a little bit, but a lot of fine particles in that uh, definitely would not want to put that back um, that suspended material back into the head spring because of the water quality issue. So uh, Dan just pulled a sample from the polymer, just pulled it out of the, um, the test line. So you can see, comparing the two, how quickly that material settles out. That's with the polymer added. So if you give that just a couple of minutes, you'll notice a, a big difference between the, and that's before it goes into the bag. So the bag basically filters that out. Um, the polymer really allows the bags to function at their highest potential, uh, removing, and then we have a clear water return. Uh, that water that's going back into the spring is, uh, is free from turbidity. Several benefits of the project. Um, we get a lot of uh, recreational value, of course. People want to come to the springs when, uh, when they want to recreate. Um, also, we're removing that material, that flocculent material, so you can kind of think of it as like a, a slurry. Uh, rooted plants, aquatic, desirable aquatic plants, uh, won't. Um, won't root in that fine suspended material. So if we're getting down into the, some of the, the more compacted sands, uh, there's an opportunity for us to restore the bottom habitats, uh, the aquatic plants that would typically be there, and then help uh, the presence of those helps in uh, water quality improvement as well. It's really the fines that are the problem. A lot of the organic materials that have come in over the years into the head spring from the canals upstream through um, a lot of vegetation that's falling into the, into the creeks, uh, that's really the, the, what we're trying to remove. The, the nitrogen and phosphorus are in those materials and that's what we're trying to remove uh, to improve water quality and water clarity. So the, after the treatment with the bags, the polymer, the, uh, the final polishing uh, channel that we have set up, this is the, the final product when it reaches the head spring. Uh, no turbidity issues with the water, no suspended material. So the water that's returning into the, into the head spring is clear and um, you know, does provide that, that water coming back into the, the source where it came from. So the sample you see on the right is the raw water as it comes out before the polymer gets injected, before the uh, material goes into the bags. And the jar you see on the right is the final product as it goes back into the return water as it goes back into the spring. So uh, really makes a big difference the use of the polymer and the, um, the, the, the bags that we're using. So metal objects don't usually last in the springs very long. In the sediments, there's humic acid. Uh, the, the conditions in the sediment are very acidic. So you can see it just eats through anything metal. That includes coins, um, any, any real um, metal object. So this is just kind of an example of what the divers bring out. Uh, they use this basket when they're down, uh, separating out some of the larger material that won't go through the dive hoses, so they've just brought this up. You can see that it's really a, a study in um, 20th century archaeology, a lot of soda bottles. Um, if we do find any significant bottles, which have been um, just a few, they go back to the, labor the archaeology laboratory in Gainesville. So uh, this is just kind of a representation of uh, just a typical uh, basket load of material from one dive, a lot of wood debris. In addition to the archaeological uh, cultural resources that we're finding, we find a lot of faunal resources. Now while they're not extremely important to the, um, the archaeologists, the cultural resource 
uh, part of that is still interesting. So um, just here is kind of a representation of some of the bones and uh, uh, animal remains that we found in the spring. That's the uh, top of a, a deer uh, skull, uh, various pieces of antler, uh, deer bones, alligator, um, deer again, uh, vertebrae, not sure what that one is, um, lots of deer bones, manatee vertebrae, and then bottom jaw sections from manatee, uh, turtle, probably bird. So a lot of neat faunal stuff coming out. In addition to that, uh, you saw some of the human um, orlock and kind of a handmade fishing weight. So this is an example of some of the cultural resources that we've um, discovered and curated here at the Chesawiska Sediment Removal Project. Um, the top projectile point you see is a uh, paleo point, uh, dates some 10,000 years BC. Uh, the lower point is probably from the archaic period and then to the right in the picture are bone pins that were used um, by um, nomadic people that were here at the time. Uh, some soda bottles, probably 1930s, 1940s, uh, just um, recent coins, uh, more bone pins, and I can find out more from the archaeologist, um, you know, the date of those. The top is a, a bone fish hook and another uh, ar uh, archaic point underneath. This is a Swanee Greenbrier, uh, dates from about 10,000 BC, Paleo. And these were found in the head spring itself. So we know the springs were there at least 10,000 years. Uh, sea levels were, of course, much lower then and probably a source of fresh water. And probably the most significant find was uh, the only intact uh, Pasco Plain vessel that's ever been um, discovered intact. And we did find that in the, uh, the head spring. Uh, also a, um, a 19th century ship's anchor, probably from a schooner around uh, 1870, 1880, post-Civil War. So with projects like these, the restoration of uh, spring systems with the Water Management District and more specifically the springs and environmental flows section is to improve water quality and water clarity within these systems to uh, help out with recreation potential. Um, so we can take the same things that we're doing here, uh, the removals that you've seen, the uh, filtration system, and then use those on much larger systems like Crystal River Kings Bay, which the district is looking at as a uh, kind of a long-term goal of restoration of that uh, spring system using some of the same technology and, and methods that we're using here.